Welcome to this video walkthrough of the tutorial on how to create an SAP HANA project, database project in the SAP Business Application Studio. In this tutorial, we're going to see how to create a multi-target application using the HANA database module in a SAP HANA database project in the SAP Business Application Studio. We will also see how to create a columnar table using declarative SQL how to load data for testing into that columnar table using a, a, a CSV file, and how to access the database explorer to browse your tables, data, and how to use SQL statements from the console in the database explorer as well. Now this tutorial assumes that you have already met the prerequisites, which are to have created your SAP business technology platform trial, including an SAP HANA uh, cloud trial instance as well, and that you are logged into the SAP Business Application Studio and have done the basic configuration of a development environment and Dev Studio, uh, development studio, uh, development space in the SAP Business Application Studio. So we begin here in the SAP Business Application Studio. And we already have our SAP HANA native application uh, dev space created and running. If you need steps on how to get started with the Business Application Studio or create and configure your dev space, please refer to the previous tutorials in the series where it was covered. We want to go ahead and start into our dev space from this point. So we'll go ahead and load that up. And I have some content left from a previous uh, project, so don't be thrown off by that. I'm just going to go ahead and say close workspace so it'll look a little bit more like what you would see if you're starting completely from scratch with an empty workspace. There we are. And the welcome screen. Now what we want you to do in this tutorial is begin with the start from template. And that will let us create a project using one of the built-in wizards. And based upon the dev space that we chose, uh, we've got the choice of a uh, basic multi-target application or an SAP HANA database project. An SAP HANA database project is still going to be a multi-target application, but this wizard is going to contain additional steps to uh, create your database module and do configuration to connect it up to HANA. Since we're doing HANA Cloud native development, we know that that's what we want to use. So we'll choose that project type and press start. Now you can give it a project name and I've done this tutorial before, so I already have one with that name. I'll just go ahead and put a number on the end, uh, but the project name isn't all that important other than it creates a folder in the file system. So it needs to be uh, unique in this case. So I'll go ahead and say next. What do I want my database module name to be? I'm going to stay with the default of DB. And you have your choice of specifying a namespace, which personally I rarely do. Uh, that's mostly for backwards compatibility uh, with old HANA Studio repository projects where the namespace uh, helps separate the objects. But now that we're in HDI, it's relatively unnecessary. You can specify a fixed schema name. I'm going to leave that blank and let the system automatically generate a unique schema for me. You do have to choose your target on a version, which when using the SAP Business Application Studio, you have the uh, little bit older HANA service uh, uh, choice, but we are going to use the SAP HANA Cloud. So I'll leave it at the default. And do we want to bind our database module to a Cloud Foundry service instance? Yes, I do. Um, you can say no and then bind it later manually at, uh, you know, at a later time if you want. But I'm going to go ahead and do it here as part of the wizard. And you're going to see here, uh, before I can do the binding, I need to be logged in. So let me just go ahead and put in my credentials here. And log in. And now it knows my orgs. So I'll go to my trial org and my dev space. And I do want to create a new HDI service instance. Yes. I'll just go ahead and let it use the generated unique name here as well. 
uh, and um, uh, use the default database instance of the selected Cloud Foundry space. Of course, if you're working in the trial environment, you're just going to have the one space. And if you created a HANA Cloud instance, it's going to be in that default space. So you just leave everything at yes. We'll say finish. And what you'll see it generating HANA database project. The project itself will generate rather quickly, uh, but then it will take a few seconds to uh, create the HDI container instance. Of course, we're having to create a service instance at the Cloud Foundry environment level, and then having to connect that up to the HANA database and generate the necessary schemas and, and users. Um, so it, it takes a few seconds. So I will go ahead and uh, pause the video recording and come back once it's finished. All right, the wizard is done running and you see this, the project has been generated. What would you like to do with it? Well, we want to open it uh, so that we can begin working with it. So we'll click that option and the business application studio will reload. But now our project is available in the Explorer, as you see here. And inside our database module, you know, we have our basic project structure, the MTA YAML with the overview of our project definition, our one database module, and it's already configured uh, to work with HANA here. We can even see if we expand the HANA projects view that our project is set up and it is bound to our database HDI container instance as well. So what we want to do at this point is we want to combine some artifacts from HDI together with uh, a regular schema ultimately. But first we're going to have to create a table in our HDI container inside our project. And uh, we're going to use this table to hold data for performance evaluations received by employees and the rating that they've given the company in terms of satisfaction. So what we want to do is we want to go to this SRC folder. That's where we're going to create all our design time artifacts. And we're just going to do a new file. And you can create database artifacts directly, but it's the file extension name that's going to be important. It's going to tell the HDI deployer what type of file we're creating. Um, so I'm going to say, and I'm, I'm actually doing a little trick here where I'm saying data slash. So this is going to create a folder first. And then we're going to create the development artifact name performance. And I'm going to tell it's a table by giving it the file extension HDB table. And that has opened now. Uh, we can go ahead and get rid of this welcome tab. Now let me come over here. You don't want to watch me type. So I'm going to follow along in the tutorial and also use the source code from the tutorial. I'm going to bring it in here. And what we're doing is we're creating a table using this very SQL DDL like syntax, just without the create or alter statement uh, on the beginning. Uh, but we're able to create a table. We're defining the columns of the table, the data types of those columns, adding comments, uh, defining the primary key of the table. And you see the, uh, uh, the recent addition of the syntax highlighting and uh, well, there would even be code completion if we had if we had typed this uh, for instance here if I would come to uh, the data type and bar char uh, you know it shows me the possible data types that could complete that so and, and you also see the uh, checking for the syntax errors even as I type as well when I altered that type and, and made it something else that wasn't a valid type I, I had a syntax error for just a second until I corrected it so I can save that. Uh, you may have autosave turned on by default. Uh, that's fine. I, I, I'm, I always like to hit save just in case. Now that shows you how to create a database artifact, um, you know, just by creating a file. But there is a little wizard that can help you as well, particularly for the more complex uh, artifacts like calculation views and things like that. You probably want to use this wizard. You can get to it by going view, find command, and then you can just start typing here. For instance, I might just type HANA and I see the HANA related commands. And the one that I want is create SAP HANA database artifact. My specific project, I, I just assumed that it that it was targeting my project. Bad, uh, 
bad assumption on my part. Uh, DM3, DB, SRC. Yep. Data. There. Now that looks good. Now we'll just come here. Do index again. And comment text. And this time, it should work fine. Yep. Created the database artifact. Does not automatically open it in the, uh, in the editor, though. We have to click on it to open it. But then we're able to go ahead and put in our content. So we're going to say index. And actually, I want the index name to be uppercase. Text. And what do I want my target table to be? Well, the table we just created. Performance. And on what column? Feedback. Comment. Now, don't be alarmed if it's giving you a, a syntax error here. Yeah, invalid table name, could not find table performance in schema. Well, that's because we haven't deployed that into the database yet. So it's technically right because it's checking the database and saying this table target that you're specifying here doesn't exist because it doesn't exist in the database. We haven't sent it into the database yet. That's what we're going to do in the next step. So we want to deploy our content into the HANA database. So we're going to go to the SAP HANA projects view and we can come down here and we can deploy individual development artifacts just like we could do in the SAP Web IDE. But since we're at the very beginning here, I'm going to go ahead and make sure everything gets sent in the database. So I'm going to deploy at the, uh, the whole DB folder level. So you can just click the deploy button. It's going to open another tab where you see the deployment log. And it's pretty fast now doesn't have to package up and send the deployer over to uh, to Cloud Foundry. It's able to deploy directly here from the cloud shell. Uh, we see that it was successful, that it sent three files into the database. And actually, I think if I were to clear out my error now and then reopen this. Yeah, now I'm not going to have an error message anymore because uh, now that table exists. Uh, so our content is deployed in the database, but maybe, uh, well, let's, let's go ahead and do one more thing here before, uh, we, uh, we move on. Let's go ahead and create another file. So let's come up here to the data folder and say new file. And I'm just going to put it in a subdirectory here. I'm going to call this data load.hdb. Ah db table data and an hdb table data is a hana database artifact that lets us map the loading from a csv file into a target database table so once again i don't want to type all this just a second let me catch up to where i was so we'll copy that We'll put it in here. It's a JSON formatted file. We're basically we're going to say our target table we want to load into is performance, the table we just created, and we're going to load it from a CSV file named performance.csv. Uh, it has headers uh, and use that to, to map into HANA basically. So it's going to look at the header of the CSV file and take the names there and they have to match exactly to the target uh, table column names. If we didn't have a one-to-one -one map. We, we could put a mapping in here, but uh, I've prepared the CSV file, so it will map, uh, so that's not a problem. Now, we want to also go to our, uh, we want to come over here, actually, and grab the CSV file, which we have out in GitHub for you. So we'll grab that. It will say, sorry, you can't show you raw files. That's okay. Just say, or I can't show you the files that are too large. We'll say show raw. And I'm just going to do a select all. And I'm going to copy all that content. It's just as easy to also come here uh, and uh, create the file manually. Just go to the same loads directory, create a new file named performance.csv. And I copied that to my clipboard. And now I can paste it. 
in here. I will save that. And now we have this loads folder. And if we want, we can just go ahead and deploy at the folder level as well. And that will send the CSV file and the load file into the database. And what we see here, oh, I got an error message. What did I do wrong? Invalid data in record 71084. What did I do wrong? Oh, I probably didn't get a complete... I got a bad copy and paste, it looks like. I, oh, it maybe it wasn't done loading. Oh yeah, look at that. I was uh, was not patient enough to let the all the file content load. So now let's try this again. Copy all. And let's go back here. And now let's paste the entire file. So. Let's deploy. There we are. Finalize successful. And we see that it has loaded the CSV file. So all of our data from that CSV file should now be loaded into the database. But we don't have to just trust the deployment log. We can use the feature Open HDI Container of the SAP HANA Projects view. And that will launch the Database Explorer in another tab. And it should, we'll give it a second here to open, but it will open directly the HDI container for this project. There we go. I've got a few things left over from some other work that I was doing, but you see it expanded the HDI container for this particular project. And if I go to tables, we'll see there's our performance table. And we can right mouse click on it and say open data. And there's our data. And if we want now to finish the tutorial, we want to run a SQL statement. Grab that and I will open a SQL console. Put in my command, which is going to select the average satisfaction index from performance, rounding it, and is the value. And at this point, we have completed this tutorial. So in the next step of this series, we will move on to accessing a classic database schema from the SAP Business Application Studio.